In this lesson, I will present how characteristic radiation is produced and discuss its significance in radiologic imaging. There are two forms of X radiation that exit the X ray tube. They are bremsstrahlung and characteristic radiation. While the bulk of the beam is comprised of bremsstrahlung, a smaller portion of the beam is produced by characteristic interactions. To begin, let's represent a typical nucleus of a tungsten atom. Tungsten atoms contain 74 protons and about 109 neutrons. To keep this example simple, I won't show all the protons and neutrons. If we zoom away from the nucleus, the electrons will eventually come into view. And again, the sake of simplicity, I will use a Bohr atom as an example in this presentation. While a Bohr atom doesn't represent current understanding of atomic physics, it is the best model to make the explanations understandable. Additionally, to keep things simple, my model only shows the electrons in the first three electron shells. Like Bremsstrahlung production, the characteristic radiation starts with a high-speed electron accelerating from the cathode to the, the anode of the X-ray tube. The energy of this electron must be higher than the binding energy of the electron in the K shell. The electron accelerates, hits the K shell electron, ejecting it from its orbital. This ejection causes an intolerable situation for the atom, an unfilled inner shell. To correct the situation, the atom pulls an electron from the L shell to fill its hole. When the electron drops from the higher orbital, it must lose energy, and it happens that the energy is the difference between the two shells and is enough to produce an X-ray as emitted in a random direction. Let's look at a second situation and see how it differs from the previous example. As in the first example, the electron is accelerated from the cathode to the anode. And like in the previous example, the electron is ejected from its orbital. And unlike the previous example, the atom uses an electron from the M shell to refill the gap left by the electron's displacement. Since the electron drops from a higher orbital, it releases an X-ray with a higher energy than the first in a random direction. This slide provides a visual summary of the two characteristic scenarios previously presented. First, the high-speed electron creates a space in the K-shell orbital of the tungsten atom. Then the space is refilled with an electron from an upper orbital, in this case the L-shell. The energy difference between these two shells is 57.40 kiloelectron volts. So an X-ray of that energy is produced when the electron drops from the orbital. Again, the K-shell electron is ejected by the high-speed electron, but in this case, an electron from a higher orbital replaces the missing electron. The energy difference between the K and the M-shell is 66.70 electron volts, so in this case, the higher energy X-ray photon is produced. To summarize, the K-shell electron is removed from its orbital, and an electron from a higher orbital takes its place. Since the replacement electron has more energy than electron needs to exist in the new orbital, it releases energy in the form of an X-ray. This radiation has an energy that is characteristic of the element that produces it. 
In the case of a conventional x-ray tube, that element is tungsten. Tungsten targets typically produce three characteristic peaks, the largest at 57 keV and the two much smaller peaks around 70 keV. Furthermore, don't forget that the electron that starts the characteristic process must have an energy greater than the binding energy of the K-shell electron to be able to dislodge it from its orbital. Characteristic radiation is monoenergetic or homoenergetic when compared to Bremsstrong. Of the X-rays exiting the tube, characteristic radiation makes a small portion of the total beam. Here is a graph of the number of X-ray photons compared to their actual energies. The Bremsstrong curve produces a wide range of energies and is a product of likelihood of interaction combined with the filtering of the beam as it exits the tube and collimator assemblies. Whereas a small spike of radiation is represented of the characteristic energies produced by a typical tungsten anode X-ray tube. This will end my presentation. Thank you for your attention.